Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. We are streamside. So many of you ask for it, well now you got it. I'm here with entomologist Matt Green and you are going to love this one. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me Tim. Oh, you're welcome Matt, it's a pleasure. Stay tuned because we'll be right back. All right, Matt, so I introduced you as an entomologist. Why don't you tell us not just about the entomology, but basically how you got here, a little bit about yourself. That'd be great. Well, from a fairly early age, Tim, I was in rivers and streams, flipping on the rocks, just seeing what was there. And then grandparents and aunt and uncle took me fishing, and I tried to make the most of a kind of a... a Called a free range childhood, yeah. just going out, doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then I realized, well, I got to do something for a job, <laughs> like everybody, Sadly. right? So I just said, well, you know, can't really make any money being a fishing guide. Maybe I just study the bugs that fishing guides use to imitate, <laughs> to catch fish. Yeah. Yeah. Imitate flies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you went to school, what was right. your major in? Oh, aqu aquatic ecology, but I specialize in aquatic entomology. Okay, so if, it, that, that's, if there's that one area you had to go into, that would be it. Streams, yes. ponds, I mean, you tell me, what's your go-to? Uh, Lodic systems, so running waters. Okay. These tend to be rivers and streams. Okay. Well, speaking of that, we're going to be doing a field sample today. I believe it's a benthic field sample or a benthic stream sample. Yes. Will you tell everybody, what's that mean exactly from that? that biology or from that scientific standpoint and then we'll come back after the sample and we'll talk to them about what that means for them as fishermen. Well all benthic really means is any sample coming from the bottom of a river or stream or it can even be a lake but primarily when we take benthic macroinvertebrate samples or benthic invertebrate samples and normally we're doing those in streams and rivers and we place a net in the water. Oh. I don't know if you all at home can see this, but this is our stream collecting net. Cool. And we place that in a riffle habitat normally, and we just use our feet. We kick in front of the net, and different plants, animals, invertebrates get swept into the net because it's high flow where we're doing these uh, kicking and sampling so okay. yeah, they just get pushed right into it okay that's yeah. perfect now we're at an undisclosed location in pennsylvania so we're not going to give out anything more than that but why don't you tell them a little bit about the stream what do you already know about it that you can share well this is true limestone spring creek and the insect fauna the fauna meaning the kinds of insects or invertebrates that are going to be in this stream are characteristic of any other true limestone water that you'll see in Pennsylvania. And that has to do with a unique uh, suite or group or different environmental variables that all these streams have in common. Normally it's a, a limited thermal range or water temperatures that don't exceed say 65 degrees Fahrenheit but don't get below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, sometimes maybe 35, but they don't freeze okay. in the winter, and that's important. And they don't get too warm in the summer. Oftentimes, their extremely high alkalinity means they have a high conductivity, or they can conduct electricity really well, and that has to do with dissolved mineral ions that are in the water. Primarily, calcium is their coming uh, from limestone deposits, sometimes something called dolostone, which is about half the calcium content of true limestone. But you tend to get lots of plant diversity as well, and there are different invertebrates that are kind of bonded to these plants. And we won't get exactly why that is, but you find them in close association. Gotcha. I guess the other question I have, I know not all the viewers are going to be from Pennsylvania. They're going to be from all around the United States, in Europe, Russia, South America, all over. For this stream sample, is this something that you would recommend doing in any moving water, or do you kind of have it fine-tuned for this type of water? Oh, 
The stream sampling protocol, the methodology itself, can be applied to any creek, any river that you'd ever want to sample. Okay. All right, that's perfect. Uh, it's not well suited to lakes, although you can use these nets to sample the, um, the riparian areas of lakes where vegetation meets uh, the lake water, those edges, or you could sample riparian edges in the stream behind us. You can do that too. Okay. These, these nets, they can be multi-uses. Okay. Yeah. And I'm curious, just because I'm sure there's people out there that are going to say, Matt, where do I get that net? What, oh. what do they search for on Google if they're looking for a net like the one you're going to use? If they're looking for a net like that, they want to go to bioquip.com. That's B-I-O-Q-U-I-P dot C-O-M. Okay, and they'll find them there. You can. Just, just search aquatic D-net or aquatic D-net and then have a parentheses or something water quality because this is technically a water quality net okay and uh for those of you watching we'll also list that down below in the description we're not sure how the sound quality is there's a little bit of wind so we might be gathering a little wind on our microphones but we'll be sure to list that down below so for now let's change the camera angle and matt let's go do a little stream sample sure all right do it tim cool all right go ahead you want to explain what's going on all right so we have our net in the water our flow's pretty strong here. It's pretty strong. Yeah. So we're going to put it down again and then we're going to kick. And normally you'd want about a two to three minute kick. You're not going to see all two to three minutes of this, <laughs> but we will kick for that long to give you an idea of what's in this true limestone spring crate. Cool. In addition, I'm going to reach behind me and I'm going to pick up some watercress. This is going to be important for later. Now you'll see different kinds of aquatic plants in these limestone spring creeks. Primarily, watercress looks a little bit like this, leafy green vegetation, okay. also known as water le lettuce. And you're going to get different kinds of aquatic plants in this, we're going to talk about in just a second, but we're going to go ahead and just sit this aside. Now when you get your kit net flush with the bottom of the creek or the river that you're sampling, upstream of the net while holding down tight, especially in high flow like this, all you're going to do is lift up and disturb the substrate upstream of the net and that's important because everything that we're kicking or disturbing is going to flow down into our net and get caught so we can look at what it is. Now you may move a little bit. Okay. This sampling doesn't have to be as scientific as you really need it to be. If the net moves a little bit, that's fine. This is what we call a qualitative sample. This is just a, a, a sample to see what's here. It's not going to be quantitative. There's no a reproducible sampling unit essentially that we can then scale back up to and say ah oh, there's X number of bugs here. Gotcha. But this will tell us what's here and that's what's important for you as a fly fisherman. You, you can be vigorous. You can reach back with your leg. And you're just Use, scraping the bottom? Yes. Yeah. Uh, detritus, paraphyton, anything that's right there on the rocks is going to be scraped in. Ah. Man, this is some high flow oh, here, geez. Tim. Sure looks like it, Matt. Anyway, you can scrape back up to about three to six feet is preferable. Okay. About as long as your leg may extend. Always try to do it in a straight line from the net. Like I said, see, it may turn in high flow. Yeah. That's okay. This is qualitative. You're going to miss stuff. Just about seeing what's there. Okay. All right. We've got a bunch here. 
you can see what we have in our net here. Oh, geez. And we're going to look through this. Awesome. And that wraps up part one of this two-part series with entomologist Matt Green. In part one, we wanted to just establish the notion of why you would complete a stream sample and then show you Matt's process. Whereas in part two, that is where the magic happens. You're going to see the results from Matt's sample, and then he's going to talk about recommendations on what to do next. Matt, thank you so much for allowing me to record you during that stream sample, and I really just appreciate all the information that you provided to the audience and to the viewers. Thank you so much. Speaking of the audience, if you'd like to watch more of my videos like this, please check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. This video will be housed under fly tying videos, guest tires, where you'll see the likes of Josh Miller, a member of Fly Fishing Team USA, Chuck Farimsky, the creator of the Fly Fishing Show, and my great uncle John. I know you love all of those guest tires, so check those out. While you're at my website, if you scroll to the bottom of the homepage, you can sign up for email updates there too. And if you're into social media, you can find Trout and Feather on both Instagram and Facebook. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thank you everyone for viewing this, and we'll see all of you in part two.